Hi everybody and welcome back to the Colored Gemstone Academy. I am your host Paul DC. I'm your instructor and this is my YouTube channel Paul DC Gemstones. Now if you are new to the channel, if you haven't done so already, I encourage you to hit the subscribe button. It is free. It doesn't cost you anything but it sure does help me out to continue to do these videos for you. Well, I was in a quandary of what to do this week because Judy and I were going to be traveling and I thought I wouldn't be able to get, do a lesson at all. And then I got inspired to do an abbreviated lesson on one of my favorite subjects. I'm calling it Turquoise 101. And the reason I was inspired, uh, one of the comments, and I apologize, I don't remember the exact name uh, who said this, said, I would like you to do a lesson on all the turquoise, all the turquoise mines in the world. And I'm like, well, that's not practical. It'd pr probably take me a year to get through all of the turquoise mines that have ever been uh, mined. But I thought it'd be fun to do a primer, what I'm calling Turquoise 101, to give you the kind of the ins and outs of turquoise, where it comes from, how is it treated, what do you need to know about that, um, how wearable is it, how durable is it, and then we can get into some of the other lessons where we can do specific mines like I did with Sleeping Beauty, uh, and I can cover a lot of other mines in the future as well. So first of all, what do you need to know? Uh, this is turquoise, this is turquoise, they're not all the same colors. Uh, I have here some uh, rough that has not been stabilized. And then I have some turquoise rough that has been stabilized. And don't worry, all of this is going to become clear to you at the end of this uh, uh, short but very, very powerful lesson. First of all, what is turquoise? Well, turquoise is a gemstone that is designed as a hydrated phosphate of copper and aluminum. And I've always said this, and any time I've ever done a turquoise show in my 30 plus year career, I said you cannot have turquoise without there being copper. In fact, most of the turquoise mines that occur all over the world are somewhere where copper is mined because copper is that essential ingredient. If you don't have copper, you don't have turquoise. And just as an aside, I always say it's going to be abbreviated, but then I talk too much anyway. But as an aside, I had another question last week on our Facebook uh, Live with Judy where somebody asked, well, can you do a lesson on Verisite? Now, I will do a lesson eventually on Verisite. I just don't have any samples to show you right now. But it's interesting to note that it's often confused with turquoise, but the difference is Verisite has no copper in it whatsoever. If it did, it would be turquoise, but it is a hydrated phosphate of aluminum, aluminum only, whereas again, turquoise hydrated phosphate of copper and aluminum. Now remember that word hydrated, and that means water, and we'll talk about, about why that's important. But first, some of the vital statistics I like to get out of the way. Number one, the crystal structure is triclinic. Doesn't matter, but that's another identifying characteristic of a gemstone. If it doesn't have that triclinic crystal structure, it wouldn't be turquoise either. Hardness is going to be five to six and a half on the most scale of hardness. Uh, not the hardest of stones, uh, but also it's a very porous stone. We'll get to that in a minute as well. Now, its toughness is fair to poor. And to prove a point, remember I said turquoise is porous? This is untreated. This is actually number eight. I love this turquoise. You can see that kind of, so you're going to wince when I, I do something right now. See how easily I could snap that? Remember, fair to poor because, and this is exactly why you're going to fall in love with the word stabilized by the end of this lesson. Now, I can't do that with this. This is a stabilized piece of turquoise, so that makes it uh, considerably tougher. The refractive index, we don't think of, uh, of turquoise for its sparkle, so it's a 1.61 to 1.65 in the refractive index, and its specific gravity, and that deals with the heft, which brings up another really interesting point. You know, when I pick up this stabilized turquoise, the heft, obviously it's a bigger piece, but the heft, I can tell it's been stabilized because how it feels. This feels light as air because it has all those pores that haven't been filled. And I'll tell you why we have to fill those pores as well. Okay, birthstone. Birthstone for the month of December. It has always been the alternative birthstone for the month of December. Uh, for those of you that have watched some of my other lessons, you know that those greedy people in December have four recognized birthstones for the month of December. But 
The original has always been the blue zircon and the secondary was always turquoise. And then they added blue topaz because blue zircon was too expensive. And then they added tanzanite uh, eventually as one of the birthstones for the month of December. And as far as anniversary uh, stones are concerned, it is the birth, uh, the anniversary stone for the 11th anniversary. So that's good to know as well. Now, what are the main sources? Now, turquoise, again, can be found probably in most arid climates where copper is found. So there's, have they found some in Turkey? Yes. Have they found some down in uh, Chile that has a lot of copper mines? Yes. But the main sources that we recognize of turquoise in the world are China, um, Persia, which was really, well, it's the kingdom that was called, Persia is now Iran, uh, sort of the Egyptian peninsula, peninsula, and the United States of America. Now, I know when all of us think about turquoise, we think about the United States of America and some of those famous mines that seem to have their own signature. We think of the Sleeping Beauty mine, that robin's egg blue color with no matrix coming from Globe, Arizona and the Sleeping Beauty mine. And then we think of that number eight I showed you with a kind of honey brown or um, golden matrix that runs through that stone. And that's up in Nevada. We think of Royston and the Royston uh, mine in Nevada. We think of the turquoise there that is harder. In fact, some of that turquoise doesn't even need to be stabilized. That's how hard that is. Um, but most people are surprised when I tell them, because if I say, hey, what's the world's biggest producer of turquoise? Most people are going to say, hey, the United States. It's not. In fact, far from it. Now, the United States is known for some of the best quality turquoise in the world. But as far as pure output, China produces about 80% of the world's turquoise. Again, not necessarily of the same quality of what you get in the southwestern United States, but it's important to know it is a big player in the world of turquoise. And then the United States, of course, is really, really known for a very, very fine turquoise. But the reason I wanted to do this little tutorial was not just to tell you a little bit about turquoise, but to tell you what I think are the most important things that you need to know about turquoise. And then you can enjoy future lessons on individual mines and what makes them different. So I ask this many times when I'm on the air, or I've even made this comment. If you ever want to have some fun, I know some of you are intimidated to go into a jewelry store. Don't be. But I say, if you want to have some fun, go into a jewelry store, look for the turquoise, and then ask the person behind the counter, hey, has this turquoise been um, stabilized? And a lot of people, and you know, sometimes the person on the, uh, at the counter is a salesperson, and maybe they don't have a background in gemology whatsoever, but they might start to get a little bit uncomfortable. Maybe they don't even know the answer to the question. Maybe they never heard of stabilization, and it has sort of a negative connotation to that, and they might say, oh, no, no, ours isn't. I'm here to tell you that of all the gem mines, especially turquoise mines that I've visited and all the miners that I've spoken to, I ask them all the same question. What percentage of turquoise would you say is stabilized? And their answer is always the same. Somewhere between 98 and 99% of all the turquoise in the world is stabilized. Now, what does that mean? I'm here to tell you that stabilization is a good thing and not a bad thing. I told you, and you saw me snap this turquoise in half earlier on, hydrated phosphate of copper and aluminum. Well, of course, eventually that hydrate, that water dries out and it becomes very brittle. It's a porous mineral. So first of all, it's going to be easily broken. Secondly, over time, the thing about pores is mother nature is always trying to fill a vacuum or fill a void. So over time, if you don't fill those pours with something early on, then over the years, it's going to absorb the oils and lotions from your skin and eventually become darker or unrecognizable from what you originally purchased. I had a call on the uh, air one time at a shopping channel saying, Paul, I, I was looking at pictures of a, um, a turquoise piece that I've had for 30 or 40 years, and now it looks completely different. Why is that? And I said, well, that's because your turquoise was probably not stabilized. And over the years, it just filled those voids with those same things I talked about. 
So let's talk about what stabilization is. It's a good thing, not a bad thing. It's a very important process in most of the turquoise in the world. It takes time, sometimes 30 to 60 days to stabilize something. They're using heat and pressure and a colorless resin and they're forcing it into the pores of that turquoise. Because again, if you don't, it's going to absorb something later on and still be brittle. So what it does is it makes it stronger. It allows it to take a, a beautiful polish and it almost looks like a wetter version of the dry stone you had before. Even when I showed you these, this is unstabilized. This is from the same mine, by the way. I, know, I apologize for the glare on that. Notice this is a little bit darker material. That's because it's been stabilized. So, and you will feel a difference in the heft or the weight of it as well. Remember, it costs, if, if me as a stone dealer or a gem jewelry maker, um, when I buy turquoise and I get a, like in the rough and I get a quote, they'll usually give you a quote. Let's say they say, I can give this to you for $60 a pound. And my first question is, is that stabilized or unstabilized? And usually they'd say, stabilized. Okay, great. I know, I know what that means. If they say unstabilized, I know it's going to cost me another 10 to $15 a pound to have somebody stabilize that as well as the time that it takes for that stabilization to take place. So remember, all of this is legitimate. All of it is necessary. And as I said, if you learn nothing else from this lesson, consider that stabilized turquoise is a very, very good thing. Now, does that mean if you can get some of that Royston turquoise, it's really hard and takes a polish without it because the rock content is a little bit higher? Uh, no, that's, it's always going to be worth a little bit more if you can say this is a non-stabilized piece, but it's tough as nails and it's not going to you know, fall apart. People are always going to love something like that. Now, how long has stabilization been going on? Is that a new thing or is that a, an old thing? What is that? Well, if we talk about the first recognized turquoise mines in the world, probably were those of the Persian Empire and what we now know as Iran. Uh, back then, in the days of the Egyptians and the Pharaohs and all, and all of that, thousands and thousands of years ago, they were using beeswax and infu infusing that into the stone, heating it and letting it sit in melted beeswax for some time. So stabilization dates back literally from the origins of turquoise. How they figure that out? Well, that's a mystery. Um, maybe it's the aliens who uh, did the, uh, the uh, pyramids. Maybe they're the ones that gave them the secret of how to stabilize turquoise. But no, they, seriously, they've been doing it for that long. Um, but what I wanted you to be aware of is some other things about turquoise that, you, that the lay person might not know. For example, in my career, I sold plenty of turquoise from the United States, from many from the most famous mines, Sleeping Beauty, Kingman, uh, Royston, uh, Number 8, the list goes on and on and on. Have I sold Chinese turquoise? Absolutely. And everybody says, well, wait a minute, is, is turquoise from China really the cheap stuff? Well, yes and no because China does have some gem quality turquoise just like the United States has, but probably less than 5% of what they produce will be on par with that. And some of that can be very expensive. You can spend hundreds of dollars a pound for that rough, just as you could for American turquoise. But a lot of what you see, and it's not just happening in China, but I'll give you an example. Um, I used to do like a big disc pendant um, and what it, it, it was what we call compressed stabilized, stabilized turquoise. And what that means is they're taking smaller bits of turquoise that would un, otherwise be unusable in gem form. And they put it in a multi thousand pound press. Sometimes they're even pulverizing it. And then they add the um, stabilizing agent and they compress it under thousands of pounds of pressure. And you might get something that looks like this. And, and again, doesn't just happen in uh, China, but that would be a, an example of compressed, stabilized turquoise. Now, is that okay? 
Sure, it's okay, as long as it is disclosed and everybody tells you exactly what's going on. It's a great way to get a value, and sometimes they'll even take this compressed block and then they put it, they cut it into bead form. So you can have a really nice looking turquoise necklace. It wouldn't look as, as great as some of the most expensive turquoise in the world, but it's genuine turquoise and it's for a great, great, great price. So I used to love to do something like that. Now there's also turquoise that has been dyed. Now I'm not a fan of somebody adding dye to make a blue turquoise look more blue than it actually is. But I'll give you an example of my good friend Marty Kolbaugh and Mar Marty Kolbaugh and his family for three generations, if not four, have been the leaseholders of the Kingman mine in uh, Golden, uh, Golden Valley, Arizona. It's um, in Mojave County and it's north of the town of Kingman, thus the name Kingman Turquoise. Um, anyway, they have um, a product that is compressed and you might have heard it, and I've, and I've offered it, it's, it's beautiful material, called um, Purple Mojave or Green Mojave. And they're actually doing some other mixtures of other gemstones in them. And again, thousands of pounds of pressure, putting smaller bits of turquoise together, and they're also dyeing it. And again, as long as you're disclosing that, there's nothing wrong with it. I used to talk about that. I did a what's called a Today's Top Value on Shop NBC early in my days there. And I told everybody, this is not the natural color of turquoise. It doesn't come purple. But only so many versions of turquoise can even accept the dye to get that purple color. And then they infused a bronze metal matrix in it. That's again, and that's not, that's not inexpensive stuff, but that's uh, another version of a compressed, dyed, and stabilized turquoise. Now there's one last thing I wanna talk about, and this gets very, very confusing. Uh, and I promise this will be the last thing because I, I promised it a, a short lesson. There's something in the trade that's called block turquoise. And block turquoise really does have a negative connotation and it does for a, a good reason. Now what I see Kingman doing out there, I don't call that block tur turquoise, I call that compressed stabilized. They're taking a certain level of turquoise, smaller pieces, and compressing it dyeing it, adding a bronze metal matrix to it. But there's other out there that are literally taking dust from a mine and sometimes dyeing that. And it's probably that block is more plastic than it is turquoise. So block turquoise is really, really cheap. I don't think it has, and sometimes they're probably even using halite and compressing and dyeing and adding uh, stabilization resin to it. But block turquoise is not what I would call, that, that would be what I would refer to as costume jewelry and, and kind of leave it at that. So remember, this is Turquoise 101. I will have more lessons for you on various turquoise mines that uh, Judy and I have visited over the years. Once again, I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. If you have not yet done so, I urge you to subscribe. It is free, it doesn't cost you a thing, but it does help me out. I'll see you next week when I'm back from my little trip and I don't know what the next lesson will be. We'll figure it out. See you then. Bye.